Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to look at next JDK 13 feature, which has been which has been introduced. It is about class data sharing, right? So we will see what is class data sharing, and this class data sharing has been in JVM uh, since last two three versions. So there has been some enhancement to improve to improve the performance of the archiving feature okay so we are going to look into that uh, from basics uh, as well what is class data sharing and what uh, enhancement has been introduced in java 30 right so let's go ahead and get started so what is app uh, cds as i told you this uh, feature has been evolved over java releases so first it was introduced in uh, java 10 and then 11 12 and now 13 so there has been enhancement in almost each release right so in this video we will be mainly focusing on jdk 13 right so what is this uh, app cds why it came into picture uh, let's uh, get the background so if you want if you're going to execute any application that if you have any jar file uh, where which you are executing so there are some steps that need to be performed by the jvm right so these are the steps right first it loads the classes that are there in class path okay in after loading it verifies the byte code of the loaded classes and then all the classes are uh, structured in a format internally right by the jvm so this step is performed before actually running the application right so the point here is uh, this is these many steps are going to take right, time some time right so why how we can take advantage of these steps that jvm it is performing the point here is that the number of classes that are being loaded into the jvm uh, they are same if you have a single jar file there and you are not changing it so anytime you execute this so these steps are performed and this is same for all the steps right so it is loading verifying the byte code for the jar and all so what if we can uh, store these steps load verifies byte code and pull the classes into internal data structure so this data structure and this verified code what we can store it at uh, some file right we can archive it somewhere so that when we are next uh, executing that particular jar file we can reuse that right so we have to find a way how we can do this right so application class data sharing comes into picture at this moment and this says uh, this defines you the steps that you can perform to archive the classes and uh, after subsequently when you are executing this jar file you do not need to perform loading verification and pulling into data structure repeatedly right until unless your jar is not changing so this is the feature uh, that it takes advantage of right so these repetitive steps so yeah i explained you the data idea behind the app data cds is to create a class data archive once and then share it so that the jvm need not recreate it so this feature has been from last two three release so there has been many um, enhancements so first we are going to see how we can create uh, this application cds uh, while executing the jar then we will see what the improvement has been introduced in jdk 13 so that we get idea what this app cds all about right so let's go ahead and demo it so uh, i have one uh, this jar file which is uh, which i am going to execute it so the basic about this jar is this is the simple micro rest microservice which is going to run on tom tomcat right so uh, the main point here is you can have any jar file that you want but it should have some class file that jvm loads right so go ahead and start it uh, in, in the normal way that we do java hyphen jar to execute the jar this is the command that we give right so run it and see what time it takes so in executing this it is going to perform some steps that i explained in the presentation uh, like it is loading the classes it is verifying the byte code and it is structuring it into internal data structure and then executing it right so jvm running so how much time it took so it is it took almost eight seconds right so if i close this by pressing ctrl c if i close this application and run it want to run it again it is going to take almost same time right so at this point we can take advantage of app class data sharing right so there is a particular command that i have to give which creates the class data sharing file right which we can reuse it uh, further so let's go ahead and see that command 
so this is the command that we have to pass so you, if you see the difference java that command we have to give and this is the argument that we have to pass so archive class at exit so when you will be closing your application it is going to create an archive so what will be the name of that archive so any name you can give with the extension .jsc right and then user command jar and the jar file so each and everything is same to that we give, gave earlier but this is the addition that we have made so it is going to add the jar files uh, it is going to create the archive for us so let's go ahead and execute this and see this so i am going to press enter here so the application is starting okay it took almost 9.5 seconds so the application is running now right so what we are going to do we are going to so it is it says that classes archive when you are exiting the application right so i am going to press control c so that it exits okay so you see uh, the command that we give archive classes at exit so it is creating the dot archive files putting the classes into that archive file that we mentioned earlier so as this jar file has number of classes so it goes it is taking time right so if i go ahead and open the explorer the same file that where we have so we can see we have archive.js so how we can make use of this archive.js so you can also compare the uh, size of the file so it is almost uh, same so it is slightly higher because it has the byte code after loading and internal code also right so let's go ahead and see how we can use this archive.js right to run our application so for that we have to enter a command this is the command that we can use so this is the java and this is the shared archive file we have to give the location of archive jsc where it is uh, this is the at same location and then as usual uh, jar and this uh, jar location which needs to be executed right so we have to pass all these right so earlier we gave the command to create the jar file and here we have command to use that archive file right so press enter here so it is running the application so it is going to take less time right so earlier it took 9 or 8 second now it is taking almost 4 points just half the time right so you can see how drastically we can reduce the start of time so this is the main point behind class data setting so now let's move ahead and see what the improvement is introduced in jdk 13 right so this is the official enhancement page where we can find all the details about this java enhancement proposal 350 dynamic cds archive so summary extending the application class data sharing to allow the dynamic archiving of classes at the end of java application execution the archive classes will include all loaded classes and library classes that are not present in the default base layer cds archive so we have different layers of archiving base layer and then uh, for the layer so it is going to uh, the dynamic archiving what it is going to contain it is going to contain all the class files that are not there in that are not there in base default layer cds right? so because it is no point uh, having the information of the classes at two layers of cds so it is point uh, it is important to understand we have two layers of class data sharing uh, this default and this dynamic that it is going to introduce right so what is the goal it improves the usability of application class data sharing eliminating the need for user to do trial runs to create a class list for each application static archiving enabled by the this dump option using a class list should continue work that includes classes for both built in class loaders and user defined class loaders right so this is yet another command which we can use to create the archive, class data archive and this should not be confused with this so this uh, these things are not going to taken care in this which is covered in non goals only classes loaded during an application execution will be archived right so a class that exists in a given jar file but is not loaded during execution will not be archived so this point needs to be taken this points needs to be noted right so only the classes that are being loaded by the jvm at the time of execution are going to be archived not which are not loaded java heap objects created during an application execution uh, there are certain um, objects that are being created when your your 
when your application is running actually and serving the request so that has that are not going to get archived dynamic archiving will not be done if application exists exist abruptly if it crashes so if you if you start it down gracefully only the class data saving this dynamic class data saving is going to work so what is the driving factor archiving application classes using app cds in a hot spot provides additional startup time and memory benefits related to the default cds archive that we just saw right however currently a three step process is required in order to app cds for a jvm application we have to do one trial runs as we did uh, to create the that archive file dump an archive using a created class list run with the archive these three steps we just performed right so now going forward from jdk 13 we do not have to do this right all the three steps see how we can avoid these steps procedure moreover works only for application that use only with built-in class loaders there is experimental support for archiving classes loaded by the user defined class loader so there are different class loaders right system class loaders and user defined class loaders so there is it is going to support system class loaders but there is experiment on user defined class loaders dynamic archiving enabled by a command line option will simply app cds uses by eliminating trial runs step one ever it is going to eliminate this one and will support both built-in class loaders and user defined class loaders effectively and uniformly a follow-up enhancement to this AEP could perform automatic archive generation during the first run of an application and this would eliminate the explicit archive creates this in a step to above the usage of cds app cds could then be completely transparent and automatic so it is going to remove this step in this JDK 13 and it is targeting uh, about this in the future releases. It is clear from this line, right? So what's the description? So supported archive configuration. So static base archive plus dynamic archive when both archives are mapped successfully. Static base archive only when the dynamic archive cannot be mapped, right? The dynamic archive currently requires the default CDS archive to be used as the base archive if the base layer archive cannot be mapped and used at runtime then the top layer dynamic archive is automatically disabled so it is prerequisite it is prerequisite that default CDS have to work uh, to get effect for the dynamic CDS to work properly if, it, if base layer is not working dynamic CDS is not going to work so archiving classes at exit so I just showed you this option how we can do this right this one so this base layer dependency the dynamically created top layer archive depends upon the base layer archive that is it contains pointers to base layer data so the crc value for the base archive header and all shared spaces are recorded in the top layer at runtime when the dynamic archive is mapped in all recorded crc values are compared with the currently mapped base archive crc values and if any of the crc value do not match then dynamic archive is disabled without affecting the uses of currently mapped base archive using crc value to check the base archive dependency is more robust than using file name size and time stamp checks so it is more effective right copying and relocating classes metadata how we can do this and shared spaces in dynamic archive so this is information about uh, read write and read only and uh, this mc trampoline right so you can go ahead this this jar file and how we can do this right so sharing space uh, so uh, one more point i wanted to say if you have a uh, class data shared created cds archive file created and you can use it multiple instances of jvm right so this same is explained in this here so shared space are mapping individually at runtime memory saving when you have multiple related processes running on the same host you can improve memory sharing by using two levels of archive for example when you have these programs that share the same set of libraries right so see two processes are running with this lib.jar foo.jar right and four processes are running lib.jar and bar.jar so this lib.jar is common in both the cases right so we can create the archive for this lib.jar and then both of the these total six processes can this use this shared archive that we created you can create a static archive for only the classes in lib.jar and they can be used right so what is the alternative copying and relocating in the class metadata during dynamic archiving could be done immediately after loading in the requested classes relocating class metadata to the archive space could be done at the end of the application execution before vm exit by relocating the data to archive spaces right so this is all about testing so it is the same 
it should not uh, break any current feature and work properly as uh, specified in the goal okay so this is all about dynamic cds archive so its basics and what improvement had this has been introduced in 13 so this is about the release in jdk 10 i will give this reference in description box also you can go ahead go with that also right so this is yet another reference which has very nice information about app class, class data sharing right i'll give this description i will give the link in description box of these three links you can go ahead more about this okay so this is all about the features uh, i think we have covered all the things that uh, jdk 13 has introduced so in the next video i'm going to introduce um, the intellij idea because ide is important for application development right so jdk 13 supporting intellij idea that will be the last video of jdk 13 series for now right so i'll see you in the next video with intellij idea support in, uh, of jdk 13 see you bye bye